The incidence of colorectal cancer is declining in the United States. Did you know that? Oh, I didn't. <laughs> Tell me more. And we think that's because of colon cancer screening. So we, it's a preventive strategy. We prevent colon cancer. And, uh, but it's important, even if you don't have any symptoms, to show up for them, because everybody is potentially susceptible to this type of cancer. I've heard some misconceptions around that where the procedure is painful and the prep is really hard. What are some things you tell your patients that displace some of these rumors? Well, uh, you're speaking of colonoscopy, which is a procedure that I do. Colonoscopy involves inserting a tube with a light and a camera up the rectum and looking through the entire large intestine to look for polyps. And if we see polyps, we remove them. That's the only test that can really remove a polyp. And that's the important thing for colon cancer prevention. Mm. Uh, we go to great lengths to make this enjoyable experience for patients. Mm. So we have different ways to sedate patients so that they're basically asleep during the procedure, wake up and many patients don't remember that they've had the procedure. And then they, the, the prep, we of course need to have a clean colon to look for polyps. And there are a variety of different preps now. So we think we can find something that would be individualized for the given patient. Wonderful. Should also mention that there are other ways to screen for colon cancer. Basically what you're doing is screening to see whether you should have a colonoscopy. Mm. So there are tests called a, a FIT test or a Cologar test, which are tests done on stool, a stool sample, very simple. And um, if they come back positive, that's a message that you should get a colonoscopy. All of these tests are just seeing you at a given point in time. After you have a colonoscopy or after you have one of these other tests, your doctor will tell you when the next test should occur. So if you come in and have a colonoscopy with no polyps, we'll say, we'll see you in 10 years. If you have many polyps or large polyps, we might say, see you in two to three years. If I have no family history, do I need to get my colorectal screening done? Yes, because patients with no family history are still susceptible to colon cancer. We're all susceptible to it. And it's not just the family history, it's the environment, it's what we eat. We're still working on what those precise risk factors are, and there's a lot of important research going on about that. But we will ask about a family history because it changes when we start screening. Mm. So if you have a positive family history of colon cancer or even colon polyps, say your father had colon polyps and turned out he had them when he was a young youngster, let's say at 45, we would start your screening at age 35. Do I need to get my screening even if I don't have any symptoms? Yes, your doctors will ask for symptoms, which are we would call alarm sym symptoms like abdominal pain, uh, bleeding from the rectum. Those are signs of more advanced uh, polyps or cancers. Mm. But we know that I've done many colonoscopies and patients without symptoms can have quite large polyps and so Absence of symptoms does not mean you don't have something that we should look into. So if I get my colonoscopy done and it is negative, does that mean that I'm cancer free? For a period of time, based upon your result, we would tell you to come back in 10 years, for example. Uh, that's based on looking at whole populations as to how quickly polyps regrow. But they do come back or you develop new polyps and then uh, it's important to continue that screening uh, process uh, through the years as you mature. 